ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله we praise Allah we seek his assistance and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and from our bad deeds whoever Allah guides there is none that can lead him astray and whoever is dead astray then there is no guide for him I bear witness that no God has the right to be worshipped other than Allah he is alone and has no partners and I bear witness that Muhammad is the slave and his messenger O you who believe fear Allah as you ought to be feared and don't die except as Muslims O humanity, fear your Lord, who has created you from a single soul, and created from it its mate, and scattered from them too many men and women. And fear Allah, to whom you deny your mutual rights, and don't cut off relations with the wombs that bore you. Indeed, Allah is a raqib over you. O you who believe, fear Allah, and say that which is correct, in order that he may accept from you your deeds, and forgive you of your sins, and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved the greatest achievement, amma ba'du, certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah. And the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil of affairs are newly invented matters in this deen. And every newly invented matter in this deen is a bid'a. And every bid'a is a strain. And every strain is in the fire. Tonight, inshallah ta'ala, we want to begin a topic that's really too broad to handle in just one talk. And we'll try to introduce the topic, inshallah ta'ala. And this is the topic, al-fitna. And I'm recommending <coughs> for myself and the brothers to review the ahadith of Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim rahimahum Allah in their books of fitna and their sahih al-Bukhari and the sahih Muslim so that we can see some of these hadith related to this issue of fitna. This word fitna, it has quite a few meanings and today we're not going to just discuss all of the meanings of fitna except to say that the origin of this word it, fitna it means the test and this is definitely one of the meanings of the word fitna and then it's been used <coughs> uh, also for trials and tests and those things that aren't uh, pleasing to Allah and then the word fitna has been used on everything that's makro. And uh, by makro, we mean everything that is bad and ugly, <coughs> like kufr and sins and uh, uh, criminal acts and what have you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al Anfal, verse number 25. وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْإِقَابِ Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala He tells us in this ayah And I command you to fear And I command you to fear fitna That Will not just affect the wrongdoers amongst you And know that indeed Allah is shadeed al-iqab Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala in this ayah is warning us to stay away from fitna. And by fitna, not just the fitna of those people themselves who are doing the wrong, but that uh, this fitna that will affect everybody, the people doing it, 
and the people who don't do it as fear <coughs> of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can befall all of the people because of the fitna and uh, we'll try to explain its meaning inshallah and hopefully it's around the meaning of sins and what have you that a few are practicing these sins and the rest aren't stopping them until everybody's punished for the fitna of the few. <clears throat> As Imam al qasimi rahimahullah, he says that fitna and this ayah, it has one of two meanings. Either it means sin, like <clears throat> the establishing or the letting go of something that's wrong, or dividing the Muslims, or being lazy and fighting jihad, or it means the punishment. Rather, Abdullah ibn Zayd ibn Aslam, rahimahullah, from the scholars of tafsir and from the earlier generations, he says what is meant by fitna here is ifraq al-kalima wa makhalifatu ba'du ba'duhum ba'da wa makhalifatu ba'duhum ba'da. He says what is meant by fitna is the division of the word, and this means the division of the Muslims from being on this tawheed and being together and uh, some of them differing with others of them. And that here, <clears throat> when we take this understanding of this word fitna, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to be aware of this fitna that won't only affect the wrongdoers amongst you, but it will affect everybody. As the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the narration of Imam Ahmed and so authentic inshaAllah, he says, مَا مِن قَوْمٍ يَعْمَلُونَ فِيهِمْ بِالْمَعَاصِي وَفِيهِمْ رَجُلٌ عَزُّ مِنْهُمْ وَأَمْنَعُوا لَا يُغَيِّرُونَ إِلَّا عَمَّهُمُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بِإِقَابٍ The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you won't have a group of people who will be practicing sins or disobedience to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they have a man that's amongst them that's mighty enough and able to prevent them but they don't prevent them from uh, practicing these sins except that Allah Azza wa Jal will let the punishment affect all of them <clears throat> and we can see this uh, in the narration of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu that we quoted before in one of the khutbas to show that if some of the people have this fitna with them or this sin with them and the rest of the people don't uh, chip in to stop them from committing the sins that they commit and the communities, then the punishment is going to affect everybody and not just those people who committed the sins. As Abu Bakr al Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna kum taqra'oona hadihi al ayah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu alaykum anfusakum la yadurrukum man dalla idha hdadaytum. Fa inni sami'tu rasul Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yakulu, inna al nas idha ra'aw munkaran. فَلَمْ يُغَيِّرُوا يُوشِكُ أَنْ يُعَمَّهُمُ اللَّهُ بِيْقَابِهِ And this is the narration of Ibn Majin of Tirmidhi and from the narration of Abu Dawood the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says إِذَا رَأَوُ الظَّالِمْ فَلَمْ يَأْخُذُوا عَلَى يَدَيْهِ أَوْشَكَ أَنْ يُعَمَّهُمُ اللَّهُ بِيْقَابٍ Abu Bakr and the Siddiq رضي الله عنه he said O humanity indeed you all read this ayah where Allah says O you who believe I advise you, or I command you to concern yourselves with yourselves. And those who have gone astray cannot harm you so long as you're guided. And indeed, I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Indeed, the people, if they see a wrong and they don't change it, then Allah's punishment is soon to get all of them. And in the narration of Abu Dawood, <coughs> he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, If they see an oppressor, a oppressor, and they don't stop him, then soon the punishment of Allah would get all of them. Abu Bakr al Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu in this ayah and in other narrations, he's explaining that the Muslims, they read this ayah and they misunderstand it. They think that Allah, when He says, O oh, you who believe, concern yourselves with yourselves, those who go astray cannot harm you so long as you're guided, they think, just worry about me. Mix them. Let them do whatever they want to because they're astray. And they can't harm me so long as I'm on guidance. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he came to clarify this, that what's meant by this ayah of Allah wa ta'ala is to enjoin what is right and to forbid what is wrong. 
concern yourselves with yourself, meaning with each other. Meaning enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong, as Abu Bakr and Sadiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu explained that if the people let some of them commit some wrong, some disobedience to Allah and His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, or widespread sins, and then they don't change it, then the punishment of Allah is going to get all of them. Okay, there was just a group of the Muslims who were practicing these sins, but the majority who had the ability to stop them didn't stop them, and then the punishment got everyone. Nobody should understand in this deen of Al-Islam that if a group of people are practicing sins and causing corruption and fatah in the land, that uh, it's not upon the Muslims to do anything. As the people call it a fitna to enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong. If you see the people doing wrong and you go to stop them, the people tell you, why are you going to stop them and cause them all that fitna? Just worry about yourself. If you are right, let them do whatever they want to. Abu Bakr and al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he's correcting this understanding. That you all are reading the Qur'an but you're not understanding it properly and thinking that the people can do anything they want to and when the punishment comes, it's only going to affect them. <coughs> and here Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he explained that the punishment is going to get everybody. As he quoted the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, to correct the understanding of the Muslims. And this is only an explanation of the ayat that we began to fear this fitna that the punishment of it is going to affect everyone and not just the wrongdoers in specific. So this fitna that spreads in the community, we have to be aware that the, it's upon the Muslims to stop it or when the punishment comes, everyone's going to be affected. And many times we think of the punishment in the hereafter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's more severe and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us. But sometimes that punishment takes place here in this world with failure and division and loss and what have you and not having the success of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. And this could be from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Muslims letting the fitna spread amongst them and not trying to stop it. And we know that <clears throat> this has definitely been the case in America as when we accepted Islam we carry with us the freedom of speech and to let anyone say whatever he wants to say and to let anyone do whatever he wants to do and say he's going to be held accountable yes he's going to be held accountable for what he does as an individual and also the community if they have the ability to do something about it then they're going to be held accountable also as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said in the narration of Imam Ahmad and al Hafid ibn Hajar rahimahullah, he said that it's authentic. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah azza wa jal la yu'adzibu al-amma bi'amil al-khasa hatta yara al-munkar bayna zahraneyhim wa hum qadiruna ala an yunkiru fala yunkiruna fa idha fa'alu thalika azzab Allah al-khasa wal-amma. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that indeed Allah azza wa jal will not punish the masses for the deeds of the specific until they see some wrong being spread amongst themselves and they have the ability to change it or to go against it and they don't when it becomes like this then Allah would punish the specific and the masses. So here the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is correcting, that, correcting us that yes, if people do something, everyone's not going to be punished by what that person does. He's going to wear the burden of what he does himself until that thing affects the Muslims and they have the ability to do something about it and then they don't do something about it, then everyone's going to get punished because of that. As the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam he explains in this hadith. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu and this is just to clarify the statement of the ayat that we began as he says that Allah commanded the believers not to let any munkar spread amongst themselves or to be established or to fester amongst themselves except that Allah is going to punish all of them if this becomes the case. So here Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu is explaining from this ayat where Allah is telling us Beware of the fitna where not only the wrongdoers are going to be punished, but even the innocent are going to be punished. Fear that fitna. And that's the fitna that takes place 
where the people have the ability to do something about it and then they don't do anything about it. So Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu is explaining that Allah is commanding us don't let that thing fester up in the community or amongst the Muslims and then you don't do anything about it. Because if you don't, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to punish all of the Muslims. And this is the first point that we wanted to make about this issue of fitna, that we understand that the fitna or amongst the meanings of the fitna is this widespread sin or disobedience to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam and that this fitna everyone can be punished because of it if they don't all chip in to stop or to go against and to oppose this fitna and we're to have our understanding corrected by this explanation of Abu Bakr and al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu that when people are causing a fitna it's not on the Muslims just to turn a blind eye or a deaf ear because if they do then they're going to wear the punishment that those people who cause the fitna themselves as Abu Bakr and al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu explained from this ayah that it's upon the Muslims to enjoy what is right and to forbid what is wrong or everyone's going uh, to wear uh, the sin of that fitna spreading. <coughs> Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah in his book Kitab al-Fitan the book of uh, Fitan he brings his first chapter as he says Babu ma jaa fi qawli Allah ta'ala wattaqu fitnatan la tusibanna alladhina zalamu minkum khasa he says the chapter what uh, is related to the statement of Allah ta'ala and fear the fitna that not only will the wrongdoers uh, be punished by specifically, but that all of the people would be punished by. And وَمَا كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يُحَذِّرُ مِنَ الْفِتَنْ And what the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to do in warning the people against the fitan. And Imam al-Bukhari <coughs> رحمه الله he began by bringing uh, some hadith related to uh, this statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fact that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to warn the people from fitan and al-hafidh ibn hajar uh, rahimahullah uh, he shows and we're going to see from the hadith of Imam al-Bukhari that amongst the fitan that spreads uh, is the issue of innovation or bid'ah and this deen or committing major sins with our body parts. And the bid'ah is in the act of our belief and the sins are with our body parts. As Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah, he brings in the first hadith, قَالَتْ أَسْمَاءُ عَنِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالْ أَنَا عَلَى حَوْضِي أَنْتَظِرُ مَنْ يَرِدُ عَلَيَّ فيؤخذ بناس من دوني أقول أمتي فيقال لا تدري مشوا على القهقرة قال ابن أبي مليك اللهم إنا نعوذ بك أن نرجع على عقابنا أو نفتنا The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says I was waiting for the people to go past when I was at my home and this is on يوم القيامة so the people were being snatched away before they got to me. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I will say when this is taking place that they're from my Ummah. And it will be said, you don't know. That they went back after they had accepted Islam. Meaning they left Islam after they had accepted Islam. And then the narr- one of the narrators of the hadith in the chain, Ibn Abi Mulaika, he says, Oh Allah, indeed we seek refuge in you that we turn back on our heels, meaning that we apostate, or that we are affected by the fitan. And we seek refuge in Allah from what Ibn Abi Mulaika has seek refuge in Allah, that Allah save us and protect us from coming, from becoming or returning to Kufar after He has guided us to Islam, or that we be affected by the fitan. And the other narration, <coughs> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or the next narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, أَنَا فَرُطُكُمْ عَلَى الْحَوْضِ لا يرفع عنا إلي رجال منكم حتى إذا أهويت لأناولهم اختل جودوني فأقول أي ربي أصحابي 
فيقول لا تدري ما احدث بعدك the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says i will be before you uh, on the hold and then some men from amongst you will be presented to me so that when i wanted to get close to them they were prevented from uh, coming near me and i would say ay rabbi they are my companions and he will say you don't know what they invented after you and this invention that came after the message of allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam this is in relation to the bid'a or the innovations in the deen and also in the widespread fitna that can take place amongst the muslims when the sins are uh, become uh, widespread and open amongst the muslims and then imam al bukhari rahimahullah he continues after this to bring some of the other chapters to show where the fitna takes place in this ummah but here imam al bukhari rahimahullah and this is the way of some of the ulama and allah tabarak wa ta'ala knows best that they deal with that which is most important first and then work their way down and he begins with uh the inventions and this deen and the open sins that take place from the fitna after the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and it's upon us to be aware and to warn the people against this fitna meaning to warn the people from letting this bid'ah take place around them and they have the ability to change it and they don't or to let the sins become widespread amongst the muslims and they have the ability to change these sins and then they don't change the sins and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength to practice Islam as it's supposed to be practiced Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah in the next chapter he says Babu qawl al-Nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tatarawna ba'di umuran tunkirunaha Chapter the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you will soon see after me affairs that you will oppose and the statement of Abdullah bin Zayd qala an-Nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam isbiru hatta talqawni 'ala al-hawd and the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be patient until you meet me at the hawd and Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah he brings the hadith of Zayd ibn Wahb who says sami'tu Abdullah radiyallahu anhu qala qala lana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam innakum tatarawna ba'di asratan wa umuran tunkirunaha qalu fama ta'muruna ya Rasulullah qala addu ilayhim haqqahum wa sallallaha haqqakum the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and the companions radiyallahu anhum ajma'in indeed you will see after me some leadership and some affairs that you will oppose and they said what do you command us with ya rasulullah he said to give them their right and to ask allah for your right <coughs> here imam al bukhari rahimahullah he brings also one of the other important affairs or one of the other important issues of this issue of fitna and that it takes place with the people and the leadership that the people have something against the leadership and then they go out against it or whatever and to cause the fitna between the people and the leadership and nobody has to explain it any more than that as we've seen enough of it and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to end it in our community the message of Allah alayhi salatu wa salam he gave us the answer to it and that is to give the leadership its right and then to ask Allah for your right and to stay away from causing this fitna that everyone can be punished by as Allah tabarak wa ta'ala had mentioned in the ayah and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had explained in this hadith and the companions were upon the same explanation of staying away from this fitna meaning don't let this fitna take place if it's amongst the few and the rest have the ability to stop it and they don't stop it and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength to stop this fitna before we continue there's a question what is a community supposed to do when it is witnessed that a husband allows a kafir to disrespect his wife and his deen as well as defend the kafir over his wife what can we as muslims and or a community do about it
اللهم المستعان I don't have any comment on that question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this. At any rate, Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, he continues uh, with bringing some hadith, and we'll skip one of them and go to the uh, next one. Rather, we'll read all of them, inshallah. As Abdullah ibn Abbas, عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, قال, من كره من أميره شيئا فليصبر, فإنه من خرج من السلطان شبرا مات ميتة جاهلية. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says whoever dislikes something from his leader then be patient because indeed whoever goes against the leader by a hand span dies the death of jahiliya. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says in the next narration من رأى من أميره شيئا يكرهه فليصبر عليه فإنه من فارق الجماعة شبرا فمات إلا مات ميتة جاهلية Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says whoever sees something in his leader that he dislikes then be patient with it because indeed whoever leaves the jama'ah by a hand span and dies, dies the death of jahiliya. Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah he's just showing from amongst the greatest fitness uh, after these widespread sins amongst the Muslims and innovation in this deen is the fitna that takes place between the people and the leaders. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in these hadith uh, warned the Muslims against this type of fitna from taking place in the community. But unfortunately it seems like this fitna here, and we're going to stop here inshaAllah Ta'ala, that this fitna is taking place here. And myself, uh, unfortunately, I've become tired of this fitna. And this is uh, a statement amongst the statements that just shows that there are some people who want some division between the people and the leadership. And this is the statement of the people are blindly following me. The people are blindly following Abu Muslim. And this is, wallahi, a fitna from the people who want to divide the community. As we see in uh, this talk, and uh, all of the talks, inshallah ta'ala, that we try to base what we say on the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the statements of the ulama. Blind following is when somebody comes up to you and talks from his own self, not quoting the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not quoting the scholars of Islam and then the people follow him in that, then the people are blindly following him. Why do the people continue? Uh, why do the people continue to say as uh, uh, the people who are just out of it say that the people in East Orange are blindly following one person? Everybody here, alhamdulillah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, is trying their best to follow the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the way of the salaf al-salih and that nobody here is blindly following. And if someone here is a blind follower, meaning that whatever I say uh, from myself without evidence from the book of Allah or the sunnah of his messenger وسلم, or the statements of the ulama that he's just here because he wants to follow me as an individual and not to follow the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger وسلم, and the way of the ulama of Islam. If somebody feel like this, please raise his hand so we can correct him now, inshallah. And if there's nobody here, then let this be <coughs> a discouragement to the people who keep saying it to be quiet on saying something that doesn't take place. And if this is taking place, then we're asking the people right now, as we want to put an end, inshallah ta'ala, to this fitna, we ask the people right now, bring all of those issues where the people are following me and I'm coming for my own desires without quoting the book of Allah or the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa or the way of the ulama so we can deal with each and every one of those issues right now otherwise we hope that we don't have to hear this anymore is there somebody from amongst the people who say that we're blind following here in East Orange that wants to bring up those issues of blind following so that we can be so we can stand corrected meaning they're going to bring the issue 
inshallah, and to tell me where I was telling the people to do something based on my own desires, and then they're going to explain to us in light of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam where we should be on that particular issue. Or should I just point out some of the brothers who I heard said it and ask them, did they say this? And then to present your case now. Really, we prefer that the people have enough courage after Islam to stand up and to say what they have to say instead of to just pass it around. Because nobody has come to me and said, uh, to my face that I can remember, to say, you leading the people on your own desires, please stop and issue so-and-so and so-and-so. Except that I keep hearing it over and over from different people. <coughs> Allah. There was a question from the sister. I don't really see the relevance to the topic. What if someone tells you that he robbed a bank and the bounty hunters are looking for him or her? What do you do? Ask if to turn himself in or be silent. Yeah, I don't know anything about that along those questions. At any rate, we just wanted to summarize these two positions, these two points today around this issue of fitna, that there's some fitna that can take place by a minority in, uh, amongst the Muslims, and the majority has the ability to do something about it, and they don't do something about it, everybody's going to be punished because of that fitna. And we have to be aware of that fitna by enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong. And Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, as he began to mention some of the hadith, showed that this fitna takes place in different ways. And that amongst the ways is by innovating in this deen, meaning by establishing acts of worship to get closer to Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, not prescribed by Allah or His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, or that the people just have big, open, major sins that are just... Uh, uh, apparent in the community or as in the second chapter that Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah meant the issue between the division of the people and the leadership 
And we had quoted some of the statements of the ulama to show that the fitna in this ayah could have meant uh, uh, in more particular or into being more specific about this fitna that's in general inshallah that this fitna is related to the division of the Muslims. And that sometimes we have a fitna going around just like the example that I gave from the statement of the people saying that the people are blindly following me. This is a statement for someone just to cause problem between the uh, leadership and the people by saying, no, nah, I don't blind follow him. Just for that, I'm going to show you. Why? I ain't even going to go to the masjid no more. See? I ain't with him. And you know how the people, they make a statement in order to let you show how it's not like they're saying. And they just made the statement up anyway in the first place as there's no backing and every time we have to stand up and to ask the people to come forward they never come forward but they have all of their mouth when they're by themselves I just hope that in the future inshallah ta'ala that if people here this is advice for myself and the Muslims that if people here that the Muslims are causing this type of fitna of division of the Muslims that they be sure to warn the Muslims who are doing this from doing it and to warn all of the Muslims who might be affected from this to be aware of those people who are dividing the Muslims and causing this fitna. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us successful. Um, yes. Um, since you asked that question, it's just been on my mind that I believe it or not, uh, one of the biggest issues that the people are still discussing, maybe not around here, of course, in another area of New Jersey, downtown, the people are just still saying that uh, in general the people here at East Orange are following Abu Muslim are still uh, 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 on this masjid Dior issue uh, as far as uh, calling it masjid Dior and things of that nature uh, because of the news that some other people, alhamdulillah, who will Allah is blessed with knowledge they're saying this is what the people are hearing that you can't call it Matthew Jirah and that the people are calling it Matthew Jirah and with no proof but Abu Muslima has the proof and everybody else doesn't have the proof so they're blind following Abu Muslima and when you're asked why are you calling it Matthew Jirah or bring your proof of how it's Matthew Jirah then you can't produce when, your blind this is what the people are saying. When, when you hear them say that, what did you say? They don't tell me. How you hear it? This comes to me by other people. Yeah, what, when I, they brought it to you, what did you I say just, to them? I just argue. I get into argument and I just let them speak. But, alhamdulillah, to me, myself is, you know, clear, but I'm just telling you, this <coughs> is one of the things that Really, Alhamdulillah, and I'm glad that some of the brothers close to me they witnessed this when I came. I said that the way of some of the way of the deviants to stop the truth is that they say that the people of the truth only focus on that. And for this matter, we wanted to make our classes to cover all of Islam, so that people can't say you focus on that. If the people come here, like they say, that in East Orange there's a focus on Masjid Dirah then uh, the people obviously are blind. And here you find that people are focused on making zikr and dua. People are focusing on memorizing the Qur'an, practicing the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi People are focusing on correcting their aqidah, correcting their understanding of Islam. Here people are focusing on where can they put their money to benefit Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's deen. People are focusing on how much of their spare time can they use to help Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala's deen. People here are focusing on raising their children as real Muslim children by establishing a Muslim school. Here, and we can go on and on and on to show what the Muslims are focusing on. So really the people when they hear this, all I can say is the statement that some of the ulama used to say, they didn't find any shape on to carry their news but you. Because really, we shouldn't have to hear stuff like that. Because as soon as somebody says it, you just say, really, it seems like the shaitan is whispering to you and he's catching you out there. I'm telling you, you should stop that thing right now. And then he's not going to carry it on any further. He's not going to carry it on because he's not going to let shaitan use him to spread this fitna 
amongst the Muslims. This issue is the issue that uh, uh, Abu Usama said that he had came, that he is going to deal with uh, soon, inshallah ta'ala. So maybe he's going to deal with it. I said what I had to say on the issue and walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Yes. Inshallah. is it permissible to hang out with the one who has all of these sins this point we have really dealt with it in a little more detail on the issue of Muslims boycotting Muslims and the point of hanging out with somebody or not hanging out by cutting somebody off then there's something that really has to be uh, taken into consideration and this is the majority and the minority as the ulama explained, and even this is taken from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, and they have the ability to change it. And the ulama had mentioned that if those people in sin are in the minority, and the majority are upon the book of Allah and the sunnah of his Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, then it's upon those majority to change it. Not that it's any one particular brother, but it's upon the Muslims to change those a few people who have those sins until they leave it. So if uh, the majority are trying to do right and you have a minority, then it's going to be upon the majority to stay away from that evil minority. And when they interact with them, to warn them. But to sit down and to hang out and to play with them is to belittle Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's deen. As some of the ulama explained, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best by knowing that somebody is upon that which is wrong and then you're sitting around as if you're giving a silent consent of it and this was one of the points that uh, we dealt with or we're dealing with and this issue of al-wala wal-bara or this issue of loyalty and that our loyalty is to the Muslims and, not, and it's upon us to separate from the disbelievers because if we just hang around them and sit around them and talk with them as if nothing is wrong then they say no I got Muslim friends I don't know why you're trying to tell me I got to accept this now. Man, I've been cool for 20 years. And they shouldn't have this attitude, but the disbelievers should say, if somebody calls them, yeah, I have one of my friends who Muslim, and for 20 years he's been trying to get me to accept that thing. I don't want it. If he can't get me, you can't. But this is, should be the attitude of the disbeliever, because the Muslim, if he has to be around them, and we have to be around them in their land, that you're going to call them to that which is correct. And if you're forced to have to be around some of the Muslims who have these sins that they won't let go, when you're around them, try to call them to this truth, but not to get involved in hanging out in them, or they'll get you into what they're into. Because either you're going to call them, or you're going to be called to what they're upon. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let us be strong on the truth. Uh, yeah, there's something that I'll do. Um, first of all, if we're going to talk, and they said, well, why don't you come and talk to me, or whatever, I said, if 
you're going to be talking about that garbage that you were talking about, there's nothing for us to talk about. Okay? I said that furthermore, the stuff that you're talking about, it's your own personal case that you shouldn't be spreading that stuff. Okay? But, and, and the other brothers, and I, and I shared this with the other brothers, and they agreed, but the thing is, is that this person says, just like you said, oh, I don't go to the city. Okay? They try to justify all of your reasons or whatever the case may be. But the point is, is that it's a personal thing. It has nothing to do with the plan. Okay? And I don't know too much about the plan, but I do know the much that the person who's speaking, they don't have any knowledge. Okay, and it's a personal thing, you know, and um, when these people come to us, we should stop them, you know, and try to admonish them and let them know that this is not a plan. You don't slander another Muslim, okay, because something happens and you disagree with it, you know, but the point is, is here that I, I address this person, and um, I'm more than sure that everybody here knows exactly what I'm talking about, you know, so it's like he's trying to rally up support, you know, for whatever the reason is, so we have to stop these people. You know, because that's where the division comes in. If we don't say nothing, then we become a part of it. Nah, that's, that's really the issue. Because if somebody says something about me, <clears throat> really, astaghfirullah, I hate to be a part of this old statement. We used to say, sticks and stone may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. <laughs> but nobody's worrying about somebody call, talking about me. Thank you. And, just a minute. And, who am I that the people won't talk about me? When they call the Messenger of Allah, sallam, a madman and a poet and a kahin so of course they should call us worse than that we ain't on the level of the messenger of Allah والسلام, they can call us worse than that and we shouldn't be offended whatsoever because the messenger of Allah والسلام, was called what he was called وسلم, and he continued to call, the truth, call to the truth so we're on the nowhere to be compared with the prophets of Allah except that we try to practice what they left for us and that nobody should feel offended. I'm the last one to feel offended what somebody says about me personally. But the issue isn't what somebody is saying personally about somebody, that there's something behind it. And this is the fitna of dividing the community and dividing the Muslims and turning some Muslims against other Muslims or to make the Muslims oppose one another as they take certain figures to talk about them. And we know that it's a difference depending on who you're talking about that it could divide the Muslims and who else you're talking about might not divide the Muslims so the people they're aware of what they do and even they know who to talk to as the people seem to always catch the newer people or the people they feel who don't have a good understanding to drop all of their foolishness on them and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us let me see the brother Abdul Malik Allah ibarak fi. Wa alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. I just wanted to ask that I that you quoted at the beginning of the um dubs. Where is this I? Uh, it's at the place uh, that I quoted where it was from. And which was? Surah to Anfal, verse number twenty-five. Ah, Allah ibarak fi. Wa fi kabar. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Muslims know that the Muslims' blood is sacred, 
but they make up these excuses to make the haram halal. And this is one of the big fitness. But really it's upon us, and this is the advice I've taken from one of the ulama, hafadhullah, uh, and that's his statement, don't worry about what the people say. If what they say is good, alhamdulillah, and if what they say is wrong, then there's nothing to worry about. Because the people they used to say <coughs> to, to myself, you blindly follow Al-Alban. And I remember in the beginning we used to be upset. And say, if we blindly follow Al-Albani, why do we have 1,500 books in our library? Why don't we only have 10 of them in our library like you, 10 books from the Ikhwan al-Muslimi? Or why don't we only have 3 books like you, 3 books of Madhab so-and-so? And anyone who listens uh, to the people, Ahlul Hadith, or trying to follow the truth, they hear so many scholars quoted, they wonder which one do you like the best. And they hear you praise each of them so much that every time they hear you speak about one, they think you love him more than the next. Until you mention the next. No, it's that one. Until you mention the next. Because the people of the truth, they love the ulama. And they know that blind following is the way of the people of deviance. Rather, it's the way of the kuffar who say that I'm going to die on what I'm dying on because my fathers were upon it. The way of the Muslim was on the truth is that he listens to what is being said and he follows the best of it. And he knows that what's upon him is to obey Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to follow the way of the salaf of salah. So really this is just attempt from the people who are drowning in their own sins to try to prevent the people from purifying themselves. And really it's no need to worry about them now, alhamdulillah. As we see, alhamdulillah, the Muslims are just growing. Uh, not just in number, but in the practice of al-Islam, alhamdulillah. And it's no need to even argue with the people. And I remember some time uh, ago, we had mentioned the statement of one of our ulama. We remember the da'wah of so-and-so, and I remember the day we made Salatul Janazah on that da'wah. <laughs> and we remember deviant so-and-so, and we remember the day we made janazah on that foolishness. And really, wallahi, even today, we can say it. People remember when maybe Noble Jew Ali was strong with that foolishness. And people remember when the Salat al-Janazah was made on that foolishness. And the only people remaining are the living dead. And the same thing about the da'wah of Elijah. And the same thing about the da'wah of the white York from the Ansar al shayateen And the same thing about many of the da'wahs of deviance, everybody remembers when it was living and everybody remembers it dead. And we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to kill off this foolishness. So really it's not upon us to even argue with the people because the truth is clear from falsehood. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this. Somebody else over here. Uh, this is all uh, we had time to present uh, today. <coughs> and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for success and to keep the fitna out from amongst us and to make us strong enough to deal with it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us wise enough not to take every little thing and call it a fitna and start attacking the Muslims. But that, as the examples were given from these hadith from Imam al Bukhari, that when something becomes serious as dividing the Muslims or practicing bid'ah or practicing these open, big, major sins and calling the people to it and trying to make the people understand that it's okay to do it, when things get on this level, then it's upon the Muslims to stop the fitna, but not just on every individual brother that might have a few shortcomings. And all of us have shortcomings. We ask Allah to overlook them. And not to make an attack. See the brother, he didn't do such and such. Let's go stop him before the fitna spread. Alhamdulillah. Or that the brother didn't do such and such. Let's stop him before the fitna spread. But not on every little thing. But when the thing becomes serious. As examples were mentioned from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah. Alayhi salatu wassalam. Naam. Know that when we get 
become his clothes are unable to, you know, and fall into the category of committing, you know, kufra by physically doing so. And alhamdulillah that we, inshallah, are trying to establish the kingdom, and the people who come with this stuff are going to try to get some of us to get into that, because that's just where they're trying to take some of us. And may Allah fall down a guide us and protect us from that, because it's the serious factor of Muslims fighting one another. Now this is this, this is only the way of the sinners that they fight the Muslims and the people who really have no iman that they fight the Muslims. This is the way we used to do before we accepted Islam. Remember we were kufar and the brother is hiking on you and you can't <laughs> you can't defend yourself. You just gotta swing on him because you can't defend it. And this is the same way when the people are upon their deviance and their foolishness. When the truth comes, they have nothing to say. When you quote the ayat, they can't say nothing. So the only thing they can say is, if you don't shut up, we're going to shoot you. Or stuff cotton in your mouth like they say. And really ain't nobody going to do nothing and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us strong. Because nobody's going to do anything except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed it. And we know that if the people come to get us, to harm us, and if Allah wrote that, that's what's going to happen to us. And if Allah wants the people to benefit us, and that's what He wrote for us, then it's going to happen. But the believer ain't worried about what's going to happen because nothing's going to happen except that which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has already decreed. What the believer is worrying about is how is he going to please Allah? How is he going to prepare himself to meet Allah? But nobody's going to be worrying about what somebody's going to do to you. Even in Jahiliyyah, the people were a little wor- less worried about what somebody say he was going to do. And in Islam, it's even less than that. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to let us die on this feet. Well, let's make this the last comment. We can help ourselves by being young and this deep and by having a little knowledge by being quiet <coughs> and by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find people and I was just uh, just the other day, the brothers have come to debate on the issue of leadership. And he's drinking with his left hand like this, and he's reading. Now brother see y'all brothers up there doing <laughs> and this really the way that somebody's gonna save himself from becoming like this brother is from the worship of Allah. And we should concern ourselves with our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of concerning ourselves about big issues that we can't handle. As one of our sheikhs used to say, you want to fly, but you don't have no wings. You want to speak about Islam, but you ain't memorized no Quran. You ain't memorized no Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. You want to be righteous, but you don't make Salah. And you don't fast. And you don't make Zikr. You want the people to respect you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put us on, purify ourselves. And this correct aqidah and this true deen of Al-Islam. Alhamdulillah. Thank <laughs> you.